In some of the world's poorest nations, accessing health care is a struggle. Making well-informed decisions can determine if people live or die. Over the coming years, a new project will try to revolutionise the way health policy is made in Africa. In a Lusaka township, Grace lives with her three surviving children and grandchildren. Several years ago, her son Masalso started acting strangely. Masalso was eventually diagnosed with a mental illness. But like many Zambian families, Grace has struggled to get treatment for her son. Zambia is one of the poorest countries in the world, with an average life expectancy of only 42. HIV and AIDS, TB and malaria are just some of the illnesses that take a toll on the population and the limited health budget. We tend to concentrate so much on communicable diseases, neglecting non-communicable diseases like mental health. Less than 1% of Zambia's health budget is spent on mental health. At one stage we had less than 100 mental health workers across the country and we only had one psychiatrist for a population of about 10 million, you can imagine. So the services deteriorated in terms of quality of our service and most of the health workers were overworked. I think what we need basically is human resource. We need psychiatrists, we need the clinical psychologists, we need social workers. I think it's critical. You know, once we've got human resource, I think it will be easier for us to provide uh, 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 the services that are required. Dr. Mwanza Banda is one of only two psychiatrists currently working in Zambia. We do not give a full comprehensive uh, treatment that is required for patients. We have a shortage of other people who should complement and form the, the multidisciplinary approach. The mentally ill are also badly stigmatised. They are discriminated against, they are scorned, they are marginalised, they are ill-treated, they are beaten, the mentally ill. Sometimes even to take water, I mean rather to go and drink from a tap, no one is going to allow a mentally ill to go on a tap. So you will find that uh, they think he can't drink fresh water. Stephen has dealt with schizophrenia and alcohol-related illnesses for several years. Two weeks ago, he was savagely beaten in the street. They come beside a man with a jacket and they say, I show you, they're starting beating me. They look at such people you know, to be having some kind of social punishment. It's like they are wrongdoers in the community. Therefore, they deserve walking naked. They deserve, I mean, uh, eating from rubbish heaps. Uh, they just deserve just to be on their own. That's good. Joseph Kasonde is a mental health social worker. Once a month, his NGO provides food and water for the mentally ill in the capital, Lusaka. Without their help, many of these people would receive little or no assistance. Uh, the mentally ill themselves, they are able to develop hope in us. They are able to develop trust and confidence to an extent where we try to use that opportunity to persuade them to be referred to a mental health facility for psychiatric assessment. Mm -hmm. 
This is Zambia's only psychiatric hospital, Chinama Hills. The main problem that you are facing in Chinama today are mental disorders due to drug and alcohol disorders. Then the second one is HIV and AIDS, which is the direct effect of HIV on the brain. Joyce Lungu is visiting her daughter who was admitted to Chinama two weeks ago. Joy still doesn't know what's wrong with her daughter. Not everyone has access to even the limited services available at China Ma. Over 60% of the population lives outside Lasaka. In rural Mumbwa, Florence Kaingo's family is one of many struggling with mental illness. There are not so many people who can assist you. They can just look at you like that. And for me, I can't leave my brother, I can't leave my son alone, I mean, being in such problem. I have to fight hard so that I can take him to the hospital. Florence cares for her son as well as one of her brothers. And I can just say that it's a family disease because there's another brother of mine also is sick. There is no services for people with mental health problems at primary health care level. Either they don't have staff or the, or the few staff that are there have been absorbed into general health uh, health care. So the tendency is uh, when a patient with mental health problems arrives at health centre level, the tendency is to straight away refer them to a general hospital setting uh, when the problem could have been dealt with at primary health care level. In recent years, the Zambian government has established a mental health policy and guidelines for community health workers. The 1959 legislation that still governs the mentally ill is also being redrafted. Five new psychiatrists will be trained next year, and 120 mental health clinical officers and specialist nurses will soon be stationed around the country. It's a start. It's a start. The challenge is still huge. Because our vision as government is to take healthcare as close as possible to the community. Part of the problem is no one really knows the full extent of Zambia's mental health problem. The research has never been done. Most of the time we are relying on figures that are not generated from Zambia. We don't have indigenous generic information or data to support the argument that mental health is an important aspect of the public health agenda for Zambia. But that's about to change. Researchers are now working to compile a dossier that will determine the nature and extent of Zambia's mental health problem. We believe that the dossier will give us a baseline from where to start from in, in as far as how we can move in improving services and then we shall be able to identify what gaps are there uh, in, the, in the research. This dossier is one of the first priorities of the SHORE project in Zambia. SHORE supports the use of research evidence to better inform decisions about Africa's health systems. The project will collaborate with and strengthen existing networks now working in Africa. SHORE really can help us implement evidence-based services because the research alone should, is not uh, an end in itself. 
is actually a means also of improving services. We need to, as we implement services, we also need to document what we are doing. Shaw is also about changing the culture that exists between researchers and policy makers. Once we have uh, that understanding, it will be much easier for us to get mental health from lower down to, you know, upper the health service uh, agenda because researchers on their own can't do it single-handedly. And if policymakers did it on their own, they're going to come up with policy which is not going to be responsive to the needs of, uh, of the population. Over the coming years, researchers and policymakers will work together to use evidence to improve Zambia's mental health care and the country's health system. If we create that understanding amongst all stakeholders that I have mentioned, I think then uh, we are going to get somewhere with uh, mental health services in the country. In the next five years, we are hoping that we can attain the important uh, vision of improving the quality and the quantity of mental health services in Zambia. And I would like to see comprehensive mental health services provided to all uh, in need. That is my, my dream.